Hello, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to a brand new video where we will be talking about Deadman mode. It is finally that time of the year where the Deadman mode returns in the form of Deadman mode reborn. There is going to be some very drastic changes in the upcoming Deadman mode in comparison to the old one. So this video is going to fill you in with all the information you need to know whether you are a new player or an old one. And we'll be talking about my personal concerns and my personal opinions, but also we'll go through the full list of things that is actually changing in the upcoming tournament. Before we dive any deeper into my concerns about the upcoming Deadman mode, I'm very happy to announce that I'm partnering with NordVPN. NordVPN is a secure virtual private network which you can use to protect your internet connection and privacy online. There are over 5200 servers to choose from in over 50 countries, so if there is a game that you want to play but it is not available in your country, you can very easily switch to another country to instantly gain access to it. They will also provide you with a next generation encryption which means you will be secure whilst gaming or browsing online without it affecting your latency. So you guys remember the one time I got DDoS during the Deadman mode in finals that I spent entire week preparing for? Well, you don't want to be like me and you definitely want to protect your IP, so therefore I would highly recommend you to get yourself NordVPN, protect your IP address, especially if you're planning on competing in any tournaments or competing in Deadman mode or joining any team speak. Protecting your IP is really, really important. So if NordVPN sounds interesting to you, head over to nordvpn.com slash Mika or just use the code Mika to get a two-year plan plus a bonus gift with a huge discount. Thank you once again NordVPN for supporting the channel. Now most of you guys that are subscribed to this channel already know what Deadman mode is because majority of my subscribers actually come from the past tournaments that we've done on this channel. But if you are new to the channel you might not fully know what Deadman mode is and this Deadman mode also has quite some big changes so even if you already know everything about Deadman mode this one's gonna be different. So DMM in short so I don't say Deadman mode every single time is a PvP game mode primarily where you have increased increased XP rates, you have some quests that are auto-completed, you have generally higher drop chances with a lot of different bosses or monsters, you have a unique drop table that is available only in DMM, but on top of that, this Deadman mode specifically also has a thing called sigils. Now this is the big mystery about this Deadman mode, we actually don't know what these sigils will, be, will provide you, and I think there's gonna be like over 50 of them and we do not know anything about it, so those could be some really insane saying let's call them abilities that will enhance either your damage maybe your stamina maybe your drops we honestly do not know consider them something like relics in leagues and since the deadman mode starts on the 25th of august unless jagex teases us with some of the sigils we will only find out then what those sigils actually are as much as i wanted to focus on just sigils and the best combos for this video unfortunately i can't do that because i don't know what those are even going to be yet. And obviously, the most known thing about Deadman mode is when you kill someone, you get a bank key. Now, you can use those bank keys in safe zones to open them up and get 10 of the most expensive items in that person's bank. In the past, those were very skewed with like seeds and useless runes and random stuff that would just inflate the price. So, my first concern here comes in hoping that that is no longer the case in this Deadman mode. I don't think that was really brought up up in the discussion leading up to this DMM so we'll see if that is still skewed but that is one of the things that immediately crosses my mind but to be honest that is not even that big of a problem. Another big thing in this DMM is going to be the removal of all the past restrictions. Now, in the past, DMM created some sort of a meta. There would be items that are very hard to obtain that would be very crucial for someone's success. Let's go a couple of Deadman modes back. The Deadman mode where I ended up being fourth. The meta was to use full Varax with Vengeance. And back then, there was no VLSs, no Zuriel staffs, nothing like that. So Varax was insanely powerful. It was the best strategy to use and the winner ended up being a Vengeance and full Varax user. Now, when the Deadman mode evolved and we did receive the VLSs, the Zuriel staffs, all the throwing axes and whatnot, 
the meta slightly shifted. We ended up having a suffering meta where there were some very big clans holding down the suffering area and getting all the rings of suffering for themselves. If you don't know what the ring of suffering does, it is a ring that basically stores recoils and whenever you hit someone, you basically take damage. And on top of that, the ring has insanely nice defensive stats. So it was a very important piece of equipment that you might want. And then on top of that, the very latest Deadman mode also showed the inclusion of Elijah Spirit Shield. That was honestly game-changing, and the winner ended up having both, I think, Arcane and Ellie. So that's just a little bit to put into perspective of how OP some items would be. And because the items would be OP, in the past, what the Jagex would do is they would remove the items completely. So you would no longer be able to obtain a Verax Flare from Barrows, and you would no longer be able to obtain a Ring of Suffering from the Money Gorillas. But for this Deadman mode, they are actually completely scratching all the restrictions. You want Ring of Suffering? You go get Ring of Suffering. Zolra is one of those things I haven't even mentioned. You want to kill Zolra? You can go ahead and kill Zolra and Venom people. So in the past, Zolra was also disabled because the Venom would be so strong. But in this Deadman mode, you can still obtain emblems, which hopefully will touch on emblems a little bit later, but you can actually get anti-venoms from an emblem trader, so that's not gonna be so hard to get. Uh, but yeah, Zolra is available. Every content in the game is available aside from something like a dual arena they're not including that so if we sum everything together you have the idea of what deadman mode is right now it's a pvp game mode you can kill someone and get some keys if you're scold you can't enter safe zones and if you're scold in the past you would lose a lot of experience in this deadman mode you lose a life we'll touch on the life system a little bit later but basically consider it a pvp game mode where you can yoink someone's bank and it is extremely high risk game mode now the first thing i would love to talk about is the three life system now here's how it works every single person that starts the game is going to start off with three lives. If you die in a PvP situation, you will lose a life. If you die in a PvM situation, you will not lose a life and it works like in old school, you have to run back, collect your items and you are good to go. For the first two lives that you lose, you will be losing your top 10 most expensive items in your bank and also everything that you are wearing. But for the third and last life, you will be losing your 28 most expensive items in your bank and everything that you are wearing and you will lose all your stats, and you will lose 10% of your skilling stats, and your entire bank is going to be wiped. So you will be starting from scratch when you die the third time. So this death is extremely, extremely punishing. This is where my concern comes in. In the past, we've had problems with players quitting Deadman mode because the deaths were too punishing. And then here we are, after not having Deadman mode for over a year, we come back with even more punishing death mechanics. I think this will be an issue. Now, maybe because this Deadman mode has quite a big of a price pool, maybe this will entice people to play even more, but we've had big problems with people quitting in the past and the death mechanics. After you lose the third lives, I think we'll see a lot of people quitting, especially when it comes to more casual players. Speaking of casual players, another rule that's gonna happen in this Deadman mode is going to be a combat level worlds. Now this is a pretty interesting concept and I support it. So you're gonna have multiple uh, different worlds that you are only going to be able to log in depending on your combat level. So let's say you are combat level 3, you'll be only put in a combat level 3 worlds until level 35. At that point the game will entice you, the game will force you to switch to worlds that will be from 36 Six combat to level 70 combat bracket. Now above that is going to be the 71 to 100 combat bracket and above that is going to be 101 to 126 combat bracket. A good bracket to get to for example would be combat level 71 bracket because what that's going to give you it's going to auto unlock you monkey madness. You get some smaller perks for getting to higher combat worlds for example once you reach a level 101 world you are able to buy a barrow's gloves from the Kulinomancer chest without actually having the quest completed. So that is basically going to allow more casual players to progress at their own pace. You won't be able to get attacked by a completely max person, but be aware because some people might be building some specific builds that are going to be able to terrorize the low level world. We're probably gonna be seeing some rune warhammer smacking level 35 dudes that only train strength and whatnot. I think it's gonna create some funny moments um, and I'm definitely supportive of these worlds. 
Thirdly, I would like to explain the combat mechanics. Now, there has been a lot of talk on Twitter about the combat mechanics. At first, Jagex proposed the idea of having single plus everywhere on deadman mode. If you don't know what single plus is, NPCs don't matter. If someone attacks you, they can instantly attack you even if you are in combat and just honestly just slap onto you immediately and there's nothing you can do as a you know just a pvmer aside from obviously carrying the pk in gear maybe completing the desert treasuring having barrage in your inventory barraging your opponent hugging behind the wall and then either getting a logout or getting a teleport to safety but Jagex has since decided that they are actually going to be changing this a little bit it's still gonna be quite strong for a pker and quite weak for a pvmer but at least this time around there's gonna be a little bit more of an opportunity for a pvmer to escape let's call it so they are no longer having single plus everywhere but let's call it single minus so basically what's gonna happen this time around let's say you're fighting a moss giant yeah whilst you're in the combat with moss giant you're chilling you can keep slapping it you can't be attacked as soon as you kill it you can be attacked but once you are attacked a pvp -er, the person that's on you he can't really be put out of combat so let's say you're running through gargoyles gargoyle would not target him let's say you're running in in wilderness you're running to a hobgoblin you know your usual escape hobgoblins will not touch the P pvp -er. so basically at that point all you need to do is really find that pkr off and find an escape right it's not gonna be easy it's gonna be quite hard and it's still gonna be harder than in the past. In the past, you had a lot of escapes in deadman mode. Now it's gonna be much harder. So basically, single plus, single minus, whatever you wanna call it, it's still gonna be very punishing for the PV armor. But at least it's a little bit better than just straight up single plus everywhere. For example, you're gonna have some opportunities, but let's say you are on a slayer task and you get hit by a team. You might wanna just, you know, box that abyssal demon for a little bit. But be careful because x logging is actually bannable this tournament boom here we go again another thing that is gonna be bannable so basically in the past what you could do if you are in a combat you brew down a little bit so your stats are like 20 attack strength and defense and then you click a nice little x and you hope that you don't get killed now if you do that in this tournament there will be a report feature that someone will be able to do and you can just straight up be banned from tournament if you decide to click x on your clients so uh Log out before you click X on your client is all I can really say there. Um, but yeah, there's a, a lot of like mixed opinions as to what is correct when it comes to the single plus or no single plus. But realistically, it is literally going to be the same way as if it was single plus. But yeah, it's still very unclear as to how everything is going to play out. Honestly, we just have to wait and see. Maybe the sigils are going to be really, really broken and it will allow a PVMer to, let's say, escape somehow. I obviously have no idea. For that one, we're just going to have to wait and see how it actually plays out fourthly i will very quickly talk about the emblems now once again i'm not 100 sure how the emblems are gonna work in this deadman mode but how it worked in the past is if you killed a monster that was above level 100 combat you had a very small chance of obtaining a tier 5 emblem now you could trade this tier 5 emblem with a dude in edgeville and he would provide you with a huge selections of items that you could buy you could buy attack potions strength potions defense potion prayer pots super restores Bruise. In the past, you could also buy dragon scimitars and all of that. In this deadman mode, you can really only buy food and potions. Uh, and also the addition of anti-venom, so it can prevent you from venom attacks that Zolra drops. So the emblems are going to be absolutely crucial. Another way to get them is obviously doing Wilderness Slayer, I believe. But you can only get tier 1 emblems unless, once again, you are killing a level 100 combat plus. Now, I don't think these are going to be that rushed early because you cannot buy dragon scimitars with them anymore. In the past, you would get a tier 5 emblem that would be five dragon scimitars that would be your rebuild for the rest of deadman mode i do think it's going to be quite a little bit harder this time around especially to get your initial 100k but we'll see how it obviously plays out now you may be wondering how you would get your first 100k now in the past people would thieve some ardun knights now this tournament ardun knights are disabled you cannot be thieving stuff in safe zones and expecting to be getting loot out of it you will be getting experience but you won't be getting loot so you either bait those mobs outside of a safe zone in order to get the loot from them or you do something else for money for example an agility pyramid would be a great way to get your starting few hundred k for example but to sum it up emblems are gonna be 
very important to gather your supplies, but they are not gonna be as important as they were in the past deadman modes. Now let's very quickly talk about the things that are gonna get you disqualified in this deadman mode. If you decide to box an NPC and X-Log, like I explained earlier, you can get banned and you, you, you lose your ability to participate in Deadman World on that account. Another thing you're not allowed to do is mule. You're not allowed to be muling, meaning you cannot have two accounts, trade items in between, and have one in the safe zones while the other one with no items is doing dangerous activities. But then again, with the three life system, I don't really know how they would enforce that. I guess a way around that for a player would be to have two accounts that are both higher level, and then play on both accounts. That way you can kind of get around the system. For example, that's most likely what clans are going to do. What I think they will do is they will have a very high level maxed account that they will trade all the expensive items to, but then they won't be moving that account out, out outside of a safe zone. That is a smart strategy, even if you're a solo player perhaps, to have multiple accounts that you can trade in between. That would still be considered muling, but is it actually muling if you can't get caught? I guess that is a question that will never be answered, right? And then obviously swapping is actually allowed as of right now, I believe. So you are able to swap from old school over to 07. But be aware of any scammers because every time Deadman Mode rolls around, there is a ton of scammers and it is extremely annoying to deal with them. Here is where I wish Jagex implemented their own system where they would have a deposit box in the Grand Exchange, one on 07 servers and one on Deadman Mode servers. Someone could put 10 million 10 million coins on all seven and say I want 100k deadman mode in return and someone would put 100k deadman mode in and collect their 10 million coin reward outside of it now that would be a simple fix simple solution that I wish Jagex did so you could create a market that would be a swapping market instead of trusting random scammers or random people spamming that they're swapping because you never really know and you have to do it in smaller increments and you're losing a bunch of time doing it. So there's definitely big downside to swapping in my opinion. I would much prefer Deadman mode without it. But there is something on the Jagex to decide and I think it's very hard to enforce. So I think that is why they are allowing it. And also, obviously, any form of AHKing, cheating, clienting, stuff like that is also going to get you disqualified. Here is also one of my big concerns is how quickly they will be able to identify the cheaters. In the past, we have had cheaters get all the way to top 8 before actually being caught at the fact that they are cheating. And with this many worlds, with this many 1v1s happening at the same time, pinpointing the exact location of a cheater might be very, very hard. In the background, you can see some of the footage of the actual cheating happening it is ridiculous of how broken it actually is and no average player will ever be able to beat a person cheating in that way let's very quickly talk about some questions the community actually had that we weren't aware of whether or not they're still gonna be present in the deadman mode or whether or not they are no longer a thing now i'll go through these very quickly if you care about them maybe take a look at the blog and see it for yourself but very quickly starter packs are still a thing if you lose your third life you can still get your brand new starter pack they will refresh on your third life loss and in the starter pack you will be seeing a staff equivalent to fire strikes a bow equivalent to 2000 bronze arrows and you will be also receiving a sword equivalent to a mithril scimitar alongside that you will be receiving a combat potion and a couple of tunas i believe and that can be a very nice way to rebuild with those weapons on top of that emblems will still be dropping in deadman mode we definitely touched on that in this video if you kill a player you will be receiving a grace period of 60 seconds so you have time to escape from the clans and you have time to fight back and then plan your escape route also there's gonna be xp boosts on the completion of the quest some very good strategies that you could implement in your runs would be to complete witch's house very early for a ton of hp xp completing quests for the prayer experience and also completing quests that give you experience land in order to put them into the prayer experience early into the game 
At the very beginning of Deadman mode, you will be having 15 minutes of protection. And every time you advance a combat level world, you will also be gaining a 60 minute protection. You can use that protection to do some hard to do quests. For example, would be something like a one small favor or something that you really think is hard to do. Perhaps a magic arena 2 cape or something like that. You can utilize the 16 minute protection in order to go ahead and do some of those really hard activities. Another important thing is during the 1v1s you will have an ability to get your initial setup to be whatever you want if you want to take 20 brews you can take 20 brews but every fight after that you will get a set setup so we'll be receiving one brew two restores 10 shark one angler four karambo ones and a combat pot and the ranging potion so the first fight is going to be crucial stack your inventories with as many brews and restores as you think is needed for your highest chance of actually winning your initial 1v1 another thing i'm not quite sure if i touched on is the fact that you will be receiving extra drops every Everywhere. and in the past you would only be able to receive VLSs and Zuriel staffs in the wilderness now you can receive them everywhere but they are much rarer outside of the wilderness if I understand correctly you can also not pickpocket the GP from Ardu Knights in the safe area so you need to find ways to pickpocket outside of the safe area basically and I think with that I then covered all of the changes Lastly, let's talk about the final. Now the tournament actually starts on the 25th of August and it's gonna run for about 3 weeks. We currently don't fully know the actual date of the 1v1s, but this time around the final consists of straight up only 1v1s. In the past we had this massive multi-fight, top 200 something players would then get into 1v1s until we had one player remaining. This time we're actually having a brand new different 1v1s. So we're gonna have 4 different worlds and we're gonna have 512 players in each of those worlds. There's gonna be likely 1 NA West World, 1 NA East World and 2 European Worlds. Now players will battle it out in a 1v1 setting until there's basically going to be 512 players left in the four worlds together and then they will merge all of those players into one world and then we're gonna have 1v1s until one person is standing. That's a little bit complicated but consider it you're in your own world you have a couple of 1v1s and then if you make it through you're moved on into a grand final 1v1 world where you at the end of it get the winner. The winner will obviously be, be getting quite a nice compensation in price. There's a $20,000 on stake for the winner. Second place will be receiving 10 k Third and fourth place will be receiving $1,000. And fifth to 16th place will be receiving 12 months of a membership. So this is something we have been asking for for a long, long time. The removal of the multi-zone. Uh, however, that does hurt clans quite a lot. Now, here is my proposed solution for the future Deadman modes. Have a multi-fight that you run from start to finish and have a winner there, but then also have a 1v1 that you run. So you would have a big multi-fight, but you would also have 1v1 fights. That way you would keep the clans satisfied, but you would also keep the single players satisfied. So you'd have two things to look forward to, really. And that way you would kind of need to have more price money, more price rewards, but it is definitely possible. It could definitely be done, perhaps for for the future deadman modes obviously there's a lot of things and personal stories i could still talk about in this video but to sum it up the very important part about this deadman mode would be the fact that we now have three life system after you lose your third life you are losing completely everything and starting from scratch obviously aside from your skills we also have a single plus type of combat that isn't called single plus but technically still is kind of like single plus where everyone can attack you anywhere and they can't be PJ'd off. In the past that was kind of basically completely the same uh, because you would have a clan hitting you. This time you will most likely just have one person hitting you with a couple of friends nearby. And the big one obviously the sigils. We don't know anything about the sigils yet but the sigils are gonna be crucial in this deadman mode. There is all in all a lot of changes. If you guys are interested in more of the deadman mode stuff you can go ahead and check some of my past deadman mode tournaments i have a ton of videos on different dmms that you will most certainly enjoy if you go back and watch them but with that being said i thank you for watching this video i hope it was enjoyable it was more of a like a podcast type of video i think i don't really do this very often it's just me speaking in the microphone and thinking about what i'm going to say whilst also giving some useful information i think 
So that being said, if you made it this far in the video, please let me know with a like and a comment. It's, it, it's a long one, honestly, it's a long one, but you know what, I enjoy making it, so I hope you enjoyed watching it, and I'll see you again very soon with another video. Have a good one, and bye-bye.